Okay, guys. Sorry about the uh, the crazy lighting. Um, I just have to bear with me on that that point. Um, something said the lighting in my house at the moment's a bit a bit weird. So basically, this video, obviously, without wasting any time, is about the Tyranid Hive Tyrant and the tactics you employ when selecting him in your army, when to take him, when not to take him, and what to give him if you do take him. So I've got here my uh, flying hive tyrant. Um, I don't have a walking hive tyrant, but what I do have is magnetized wings. So you know we can display both types of hive tyrant in one video here. I don't have both of them, but there you go. Has his wings, and I was a flat, now he's a walking tyrant. Okay, so the hive tyrant in the Trinity Codex. Um, he is a very very expensive option to take. And you look at sort of point for point, not you know across the board and uh, other options in the 200 codex, and you don't really get a lot of bang for all that extra book, uh, which is a shame because the Hive Tyrant, in my opinion, should be you know just the pinnacle of you know death causing the stuff of nightmares that you know he is in the fluff. You know these you know Hive Tyrants, you read the fluff and. You know, they just, they overrun fortresses in like a matter of hours and, they, you know, they command millions upon millions of these, you know, these uh, organisms to crush their foe within, you know, within days. And that just doesn't transpire into the tabletop, unfortunately. However, there are a certain number of ways that we can take a Hive Tyrant to be effective on the table. Now, I'm going to start first with the Flying Hive Tyrant because... That's personally the one that I use. Um, if you're playing, I'm going to start by saying that if you're playing anything less than 1500 points, don't take the Hive Tyrant. He's far too expensive to fit in anything less than 1500 points. It's a shame, I know, but that's that's just the case, I'm afraid, guys. It's not something I agree with, it's not something I like. But at 170 points base, plus upgrades, you know. You pay 60 points for wings, you pay 40 points for a 2 armor save, you pay, you know, 15 points for extra weapons. It's, it just gets so expensive, so quick. And I'd also say never take more than one. Uh, there is one exception to that, which I'll get onto in a second. So, we'll start with the Flying Hive Town. We'll just put this guy's wings back on real quick. So you get the, you know, the full effect of a Flying Hive Town. So, the Flying Hive Town here, this is the one that I use. He takes the wings upgrade, obviously, and then he has two sets of twin devourers. Um, these are not magnetized on. Like a noob, I completely forgot to magnetize his arms when I built him, because he's converted. Um, so he has the wings, two sets of twin devourers, and toxin sacks. And he comes in at 270 points. Kit out like that. But he is 270 points of pure death. Now, I get a lot of people asking me, hey, you know, Stevie, you, wh why don't you take the Lash Rip and Bone Sword? You know, Lash Rip's awesome, going to Initiative 1. It's like, yeah, I agree. The Lash Rip and Bone Sword is fantastic. It's even more fantastic the fact that he gets them for free, which is never something to forget. That he comes with the Lash Rip and Bone Sword. However, with a Flying Hive Tyrant, he is a flying monstrous creature, and you pay 60 points for wings. I want to use those 60 points to full effect. So, if I'm a flying monstrous creature, I want to spend at least three turns of the game flying around, you know, in swoop mode. So, if I'm spending 50% of the game in swoop mode, at, at minimum, I, I'm never going to get to use that Lash Rip and Bone Sword. However, when I'm flying around in swoop mode, I can still fire my 12 shots, twin links at strength 6, on pretty much on side armor or rear armor all the time. Now, you... You know, you jump the battle line and you hit those soft targets in the back. This is where this guy is perfect. You know, turn one, you know, his threat range turn one is 42 inches. So you jump up 24 inches and you just pump 12 shots into whatever you want dead. Whether it's the, you know, the side armor of a Razorback or a Predator. Whether it's that Devastator squad, that Long Fang pack. Um... You know, that independent character that may be hiding somewhere in his own. You know, Castell and Crow hiding in the back. That Farseer hiding in the back. Wherever it may be, he can get there and, you know, he can just cause havoc. Because then he's sat pretty much in your opponent's deployment zone. Right, right in the middle, bold as brass. And your opponent only hits him on sixes and can't charge him. 
and then he then becomes a problem that has to be dealt with. Um, and that that's pretty much as simple as it gets. The next turn, you then you know you you pivot your ninety degrees or whatever it may be, and you fly again, and then you fly again, and you just create this basic flying monstrosity in your opponent's back lines that, that has to be dealt with that he's probably not going to be able to deal with. So that's my personal favourite, is taking the the fly run. I will put it out there that I think the fly run is better than the walking hive tyrant. Well, the walking hive tyrant does have his uses. Uh, I just think the, you know, the fly run is better. Uh, it has more uses more of the time. Um, and again... I'd advise against taking the Lash Riven Bone Sword just because you'll find you'll you'll you know you use it for one turn of the game, whereas the Two Link Devourers, the two sets, you can use every turn whilst you're flying around, and it's just you know again, it's about you know being as efficient as you can with your points. Like this is something I, in all my videos for now. This is what I'm going to stress: you have to be efficient with your points. You can't waste a single point in Sixth Edition, um, and it's you have to make every unit do its job to the full effectiveness um, and it definitely does that with the Twilight Devourers so that's the Flying Hive Tyrant in a nutshell that's how I recommend using it that's how I use it and in my opinion that's how he works best so we'll just take the wings off real quick and we'll have a quick talk about the Walking Hive Tyrant now the Walking Hive Tyrant is a completely different entity in itself the Walking Hive Tyrant um, you know really is used to plug those gaps in the battle line. He, he works best with, um, definitely with the Tyrant Guard retinue, definitely, to them every time. Um, or even, you know, just run him alongside some warriors, some homogons, you know, give that synapse web. Um, and we'll talk about quickly, I didn't mention it in the Flyerant, the, you know, the special abilities you can take. You look at um, Indescribable Horror, Completely ignore that. It's garbage. Twenty-five points, waste of points. Old adversary um, is great on the walking hive tyrant, but I never, I wouldn't, I'd never take it on the flyer simply because he's not going to be within six inches of anyone else most of the time. And twenty-five points to re-roll ones on one model, it's not really worth it. Whereas this guy, the walking hive tyrant, he's going to be sat in the middle of a battle line. He's going to be within six inches of a lot of models. You know, think of this guy sat with two units of hive guard near him, or a, you know, a unit of warriors with death spitters, or a unit of um, a, unit, a big unit of gene stealers, wherever it may be. You know, he, this guy with his um, preferred enemy bubble is fantastic. I would definitely recommend taking. If you're taking a walking hive tyrant, take old adversary on him. Um, and then the third one we have um, Hive Commander. Hive Commander now is pretty much useless uh, simply because the way it was used in 5th edition was to you know bring on your Gene Stealers from outflank and smash the enemy from the sides. Now of course um, we can't do this. Gene Stealers can't assault from reserve anymore and the very few units that you should have in reserve, which we'll get onto in another video. It's not worth taking 25 points for the one, two, maybe three units that are going to be in reserve. You know, not like in fifth edition when you'd have four, five, six units of gene stealers sat waiting to come on. So definitely, you know, skip over indescribable horror and definitely skip over hive commander. However, old adversary on the walking hive tyrant is a you know it's mandatory. So we'll look at weapons now. The the Walking Hive Tyrant has the luxury of kind of taking whatever you want, whatever role you want him to fill, then he can do that. You know, if you want to take the two sets of Twin Link Devourers like he has here, then be my guest. It's more shots. If that's what you want there, you know, you'd give him more shots. However, if you want to take the Lash Roof and Bone Sword and have him as a you know a close combat demon, then again, that's fine. The Walking Hive Tyrant is definitely the more flexible of the two Hive, hive Tyrant builds. Like, you know, massively so. Um, the flyering is pretty much carbon copied into one build, and like I say, in my opinion, it's the one I described with the the wings and the devourers. However, the walking hive tyrant does have the luxury of being, you know, incredibly more flexible in his choice of weapons. So, you know, insert whatever you want here into the weapon section. And then, of course, moving on to the you know the upgrades, 
the walking hive tyrant should never take anything other than the armored shell and um, just simply because the two plus save now is fantastic you know power weapons you know can't hurt him uh and he you know anything that can't ignore his armors you know like thunder hammers power fists war scythe he's gonna go before them anyway just try and challenge them out if you can if not he's probably gonna die anyway so it's about picking and choosing the fights with this guy uh, so moving on to the psychic powers now the hive time psychic powers apart from paroxysm are pretty garbage so i'd recommend swapping out for biomancy um telekinesis and telepathy are good however there's only really one psychic power in each discipline that you really really want whereas biomancy you get the luxury of being able to choose from three or four that are really good you know iron arm fantastic um, warp speed fantastic uh, even enfeeble is great uh, endurance is great um, so you, you know, you've got four out of seven powers there that you, you would quite happily have whereas you know telepathy and telekinesis mm, there's only probably one or two powers that you actually really want you know invisibility is good but again it's one in, one in uh, one in six chance um, it's, you know psychic shrieks good but kind of a waste in my opinion so both hive tyrants flying or walking i recommend biomancy just you know unless you want to spam paroxysm or you have some specific role of the you know the two psychic powers then biomancy is definitely the way you want to go with the hive tyrant uh you know i can't you know stress enough how how funny it is to have a flying hive tyrant that's toughness nine flying around in your opponent's bat lines oh yeah you know, the same goes for a guy that's toughness down with a 2 plus armor save. Or the Hive Tyrant charging in with his Lash of Bone Swords and having 9 attacks. Or 8 attacks. You know, it's it's, it's just brilliant. Uh, and also, if he has his Tyrant Guard retinue, they will benefit from the spell as well. Unless it, the ones that target target the Psyker specifically. So, you know, that's, that's the Hive Tyrant in a nutshell. That's the way... I would build the two different types. Um, I would don't bother with the thorax swarms; uh, they're not really worth the points. Um, if you want to take the guy with wings, I'd recommend taking him the way that I described. Uh, if you want to take him walking, <coughs> always give him the two plus save, and then you pretty much get the choice of weapons that you want. Uh, psychic powers, again, I would recommend always taking biomancy. And in terms of biomorphs, uh, just take Toxin Zax. Toxin Zax is mandatory as well now. Getting those rerolls to wound on two pluses is fantastic. So that's the Hive Tyrant in a nutshell. And I hope that guy, you know, helps you out, guys, when you're thinking about what to take as, you know, if you think about taking the Hive Tyrant as HQ, how to build him, you know, what, what to put together, what to give him, etc., etc. And. Yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, like, and subscribe. And more videos to come, guys. Thank you. Cheers.